Hello, my name is Magdalena and I am a PhD student in Building Materials Group at Luleå University of Technology in Sweden. I would like to briefly present our research on improved self-healing of mortars with partial cement replacement. This study was performed in collaboration with RMIT in Melbourne, Australia. Elimination of waste and extended product life are the key principles of circular economy. Partial replacement of cement in concrete by waste byproducts, for example, plus furnace slag or fly ash, is one of the commonly used solutions. Also, under certain exposure conditions, concrete has a natural crack repairing ability that is called autogenous self-healing. Therefore, development of concrete with waste byproducts as binders and efficient self-healing properties could be a significant milestone towards the circular economy. Self-healing of concrete with supplementary cementitious materials is limited to quite small crack widths up to 50 microns when exposed only to water. Exposure conditions were found many times to be very important when it comes to the healing efficiency. The self-healing efficiency of cementitious composites with alternative binders requires further improvement as there is not a lot of information on this topic. Latest results for cement mortars show promotion of crack closure both inside and outside when healing medium is a mixture of phosphate-based retarding admixture and water. The aim of this study is to check if this solution can work also for mortars with slag and fly ash. In our research, we used mortar beams made of SEM1 with 20% replacement with fly ash and slag. We kept water to binder ratio at 0.35 and binder to sand ratio at one. The cracks were induced by three point bending test after seven days from casting. And we tried to keep the crack opening at around 200 microns. After cracking, we put the specimens into containers filled with four exposures, water with retarding admixture, continuous water immersion, water cycle, and lime water immersion. We used three different methods to characterize the self-healing. Firstly, we calculated the crack closure based on the optical microscope pictures of the side of the crack taken before and after 28 days of healing. We also used the strength recovery parameter and in the end, we checked the self-healing products with scanning electron microscope, and we used EDX to check the chemical composition. Here you can see the major results of our study. On the left-hand side, there are two graphs showing the crack closure for slag and flyer samples subjected to different exposures. As you can see, the most effective healing was achieved for retarder exposure marked with orange color. Water cycles were more effective than constant water immersion. Unfortunately, lime water did not give significant improvement in comparison with pure water conditions. The most important difference in self healing performance of different exposures is visible in the figures on the right hand side of the slide. These are the cross sections of the slag specimen in the middle of the beam. You can see that the cracks in case of retarder are almost fully filled with self healing products even inside the sample. On the contrary, the water cycle specimens are empty. The cracks were closed only at the surface. The study confirmed that mortars with partial cement replacement with fly ash and slag have good self healing potential, not only with respect to external crack closure, but also internally when we use phosphate based retarding admixture as a healing medium. We are looking further on this topic to understand fully the mechanism on self-healing. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, see you at the poster session.